What does the brain look like when it's on revenge? Uh, is there a revenge pathway? Uh, are there areas that get lit up specifically? Or is it all, well, maybe this, maybe that? Have we found those definite areas now? The revenge part of the brain. Yeah. There is not a revenge part of the brain. Uh -huh. And that's a, a fascinating insight. Let me just tell you how it works inside the brain. Please. When, you, when you're aggrieved, when you get a grievance, which is to say you've been wronged, mistreated, treated unfairly, disrespected, humiliated, shamed, any of those things, that the pain of that, that grievance, the pain of that grievance is registered in the pain network of your brain. It's actually like a physical, a physical pain. mental pain. That yeah. makes sense. And that's called the anterior insula, the pain network. Okay. And that mm -hmm. activates when you are wronged or have a grievance of any kind. And it also does this whether that grievance is real or imagined. Imagined. Yeah. Which, which if, if, okay, if, please tell me, you will tell me if I'm wrong. But I believe that's the same part of the brain that when someone disagrees with a deep philosophical uh, position that you hold, that area of the brain is activated, which is why it's very difficult to change someone's mind when they feel like you're uh, attacking me for my belief because they're experiencing this same kind of physical pain, whether it's you know imagined or not. Are you asking him that or I'm are you asking, telling him? I mean, I'm saying it, but I could be wrong. <laughs> yeah. This is just from what I've read, but is, is that correct? Yeah, it, it, it is correct. And it's registered as an attack on their ego, right? Their right. identity. Yes. Yeah. Right. And right. attacks on identity are very values, painful exactly. and threatening. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's step one is you get the grievance and you get this uh, activation in the pain network, the anterior insula. The next step in the process is that your brain, it doesn't like pain, right? Our brains do not want pain. Mm -hmm. And so they want a, a counterweight and they want pleasure, right? And what the brain does next when uh, the pain has been inflicted in, in this manner, right, that we've just described as a grievance, is it activates the pleasure and reward circuitry of addiction. Whoa. That is the nucleus accumbens and the dorsal striatum. Right. And we know a lot. I mean, addiction has been studied for other all these other reasons. Right. Right. So exactly. it's, it's a ready made uh, platform on which to place this idea. It's the justice thing, but this time just the scales of balance. Yeah. Yeah. However, yeah. normally in addiction, well, oh, no, it's yeah, that's right. So is that still a, a dopaminergic response? Uh, you know what? Um, I mean, Chuck, you're right. It is dopaminergic. That is a word. And there is that response in that. Uh, pathway in the pleasure and reward circuitry of addiction there. So there is a dopamine release that comes from beginning to fantasize about, plan, or think about revenge seeking, and then in actually gratifying that desire or that craving to get revenge, which is what follows from the initial dopamine hit. Uh -huh. And so we get intense, humans get, this has been shown repeatedly in study after study, Revenge seeking is highly pleasurable. It's right up there with drug high. It's right up there with sex and chocolate cake and all of those fun things. It's all there. Why is it some people's revenge is at a level of extremity that's mind boggling than other people's is by comparison quite mild? I mean, is there like a menu we pick and choose which revenge category we go for or is this just chemically dominated? Mm. Good question. It's not so much that, although there is different vulnerability to for different people, uh, but for uh, for all human beings, revenge is highly pleasurable. Right. And so you have to move then into the last step of this neurologically, which is the prefrontal cortex, which is your executive function and self control circuitry. For addiction, for people who have addiction, which about 20% of people in, a, in the population who experiment with drugs or alcohol would, will become addicted to it, which means 80% of the people will not. But 20% is a big number when you're talking about an entire nation. Especially given the consequences of their addiction right. on the rest of society. And, yeah. right. and if I'm not mistaken, it all, it's not heavily dependent upon, but heavily influenced by what age you start experimenting because your prefrontal cortex is not fully developed. So the hijacking process uh, takes place a lot easier. Mm. If I'm correct, I'm not. 
You are correct. As a matter of fact, you could easily be guiding this conversation. I mean, you've got it right at every point, Chuck. Absolutely. All right, I'm Absolutely. leaving, guys. I got to go. Yeah. <laughs> quit, quit while you're ahead. Quit while I'm on top. <laughs> no, <laughs> no it, 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 that, everything is, is correct there, and that's where I was headed, which is that prefrontal cortex is your last defense between that initial grievance and you carrying out this powerful craving to retaliate against the person who wronged you, and here's another twist to it, or their proxy. So revenge happens oh. all the time against people, animals, objects, anything that didn't actually inflict that original grievance upon you. If you can't get at the original person or it would be too oh, dangerous ooh, or too inconvenient, you will seek revenge against a proxy. Or if you want to increase the overall damage, like in a mass shooter situation. Oh. Those are almost always revenge gratification experiences. And they're shooting people that had nothing to do with their initial grievance, but they are viewing them as a proxy and it, the gratification is, is, is just as strong, whether it's a proxy or not, and whether their grievances were real or not. Oh my God. Thank you.